Hi, I'm Diane. And I'm Valerie. And welcome back to our channel. Today we decided to dedicate the entire video to the subject of pre-pectoral breast reconstruction. Now, Valerie, as a plastic surgeon, I imagine you do quite a few of these. Can you explain to us what is this new procedure that everyone's talking about right now? Yes, absolutely. Actually, pre-pectoral breast reconstruction is not new, although it's kind of like the buzz right now. Um, Pre-pectoral reconstruction was tried in the 60s, um, and it was abandoned because it was done with a type of implant that is no longer available today, and that caused a lot of capsular contracture. And so just recent, well, recently, in the past five or so years, people have revisited this, this idea probably mostly because of the advances in the techniques and technology in mastectomies, uh, in breast implants as well, uh, and also in other types of um, uh, technologies we use in plastic surgery to assess the blood flow to the skin flaps and things like this. So, um, you know, for example, um, in the 1970s, the reason why we used to do breast reconstruction behind the muscle uh, rather than in front of the muscle is that the mastectomies were much more aggressive. So we used to do what we would call the modified radical mastectomy, which essentially cut out everything. There was barely any skin left behind. It was, you know, it was a much more invasive surgery. And so at that time, the plastic surgeons felt that the best way to provide breast reconstruction was to place the tissue expander behind the pec muscle um, and then in order to have an additional layer to protect and cover the implant from the outside world and minimize infections and things like that. And so what we would do then is that the patients would come back on a weekly basis to get fills in their expanders, so injections to increase the volume gradually until they were satisfied with the breast size that they obtained. And so now with prepectoral breast reconstruction, what we do, the main difference is that we place the implant in front of the muscle. So what that means is that the implant is actually placed in the anatomical position yeah. of the breast. So, because we all know our breast is not behind the muscle, it's in front. And so to me, this, the, the prepectoral breast reconstruction makes so much sense because we are reproducing what is closest to nature. What I've seen, at least in my patients, is that prepectoral breast reconstruction's main advantage is that there is less pain after surgery because we're not going behind the muscle. We always know that whenever a surgery involves muscle, there is more pain. Mm -hmm. We go to the gym and work out on our muscle, the next day we feel sore, it's the same thing. Yeah. Um, so, less pain. I think, in my hands at least, the surgery is much faster, so that means less anesthesia time probably an, a faster recovery as well. Uh, and so patients can return back to their activities much faster than when we used to do the subpectral reconstruction. Another advantage that I forgot to talk about, which I think is what most uh, people kind of advertise when they talk about prepectoral reconstruction, is that there isn't, um, because the implant is in front of the muscle, there isn't uh, what we call the pectoralis animation deformity. Oh, and yeah, what, that... mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know what you're talking so, about. So just to they come back and they tell me about it. Right, so just to explain what pectoralis animation deformity is, is that, so when the implant used to be placed uh, behind the muscle, so I guess if you imagine, Prior to the mastectomy, your breast has the skin, then you have a layer of breast tissue, then you have the muscle, and then you have the chest wall underneath. So when the mastectomy is gone, all this layer here is gone, right? All the breast tissue goes away. And so if we place the implant behind the muscle, it pushes the muscle to heal on the skin. And so then whenever someone um, contracts their muscle and it it can be something as simple as just like getting up a chair or something like this. You will actually see the muscle contractions under the skin and a lot of women are very self-conscious about that. And that is completely eliminated with prepectoral reconstruction. That's a great thing.
One of the main disadvantages is that because the implant is now in front of the muscle, the edges of uh, the implant may be more visible, especially in slender patients uh, who may not have enough uh, fat to kind of conceal the implant under the skin. In which cases do you choose to do the surgery or suggest the surgery? Mm -hmm. Well, because I've been doing prepectoral reconstruction for quite a bit of time now, I would say that my indications are maybe a little bit wider than uh, a surgeon who is just starting to include this technique in their practice. So for example, when I started uh, doing prepectoral reconstruction five years ago, I was really cherry picking my patients, which I think is, is fine because yeah, you want to set yourself, well, you want to set yourself up for success so that you will repeat uh, the experience and, and then eventually offer it to a wider range of patients. So when I started, I would do it uh, mostly on slender patients with, you know, probably like a breast no bigger than a B or a C cup a breast that is not droopy, you know, things like that. And of course, an, a non-smoker healthy patient. Um, and now I would say that I've actually expanded my indications to offer uh, prepectoral breast reconstruction to women with larger breasts. Uh, for example, women who are looking to have a smaller breast where you can kind of tailor the skin and, and modify certain things uh, to make their breast smaller during uh, the reconstruction, but at the same time place the implant in front of the muscle. So I, I have, um, I also offer it to patients who, uh, let's say I know will require post mastectomy radiation therapy. I also offer prepectoral breast reconstruction to these patients, but I know that not all surgeons are comfortable with that. Can you tell me, for this surgery, are there any cases in which you wouldn't do it? Are there any contraindications? Right, yes, of course. So, uh, for prepectoral breast reconstruction, I think one of the main contraindications is when the blood flow to the skin is not adequate. So, what that means, and I think we've talked about that in previous videos when we addressed the topic of mastectomy, skin flap necrosis. So, what that means is that after the mastectomy for a variety of reasons that could be, for example, a tumor being very close to the skin. The, the, the skin of the breast is thinned out, or, or the, the skin envelope of the breast is thinned out to make sure that we get clear margins, but sometimes that also injures the blood flow to the skin, and then some of the skin may die. And so um, with prepectoral reconstruction, this is probably, I would say, the most critical thing. If the blood flow to the skin is not good, then I would not do the offer uh, or perform the surgery for the patient. So, um, essentially, this is of course something not not it's not something I can know in the office, right? So it's a, an intra-operative decision. So a decision I make at the time of during the the operation. Um, so I would say this is essentially the the biggest contraindication. Otherwise, I would say that patients who are, for example, morbidly obese with very, very large breasts may not be good candidates for this because there are definitely more complications associated with the procedure. Um, and also, um, in my practice, I, I would say that patients who have, for example, had prior lumpectomy and radiation and now have a recurrence of their breast cancer and require a mastectomy and want to have reconstruction. So it's a very specific uh, situation. In these patients, because the breast skin envelope has been radiated in the past, it's actually, uh, I think, performing any type of implant reconstruction in these patients, including prepectoral reconstruction, is not advisable uh, because there are a lot of complications such as uh, wound healing uh, problems that will uh, turn into wound breakdown and then the implant is directly under the skin it leads to an implant infection. So I would say that these are, are probably the main um, situations. Can you take us through the surgical procedure? Yes, absolutely. So. Um, you have to imagine that, so the patient is under general anesthesia and the mastectomy is completed and we know that we have clear margins. 
And so then I'm called into the operating room and after I make a few measurements to the chest wall, I select a tissue expander that fits uh, the patient perfectly. And then uh, what I do next is I fill the tissue expander with air to the maximal volume re recommended by the manufacturer. And then I place the, expand, the tissue expander in uh, the breast cavity where the breast used to be located and I, I suture the tissue expander in place. And then on top of the tissue expander, I add a soft tissue support, which is called a cellular dermal matrix. And what this is, is essentially it's uh, donated human skin. So not the outer layer of the skin, but the layer just beneath, so the dermis. And this adds a, a, a support to the soft tissue that is almost like an internal bra, if you will, uh, and helps make sure that we have a good stability of the reconstruction, that the implant is not gonna drop or change position. So it, it, I think it guarantees better symmetry and over. Well, I imagine just like any kind of surgical procedure, there are complications that are associated with it. Yes. Can you take us through them, please? Yes. Um, I would say that in general, the, the complications associated with prepectoral breast reconstruction are no different than what we would see with subpectoral, so behind the muscle uh, types of reconstruction. And so, uh, so like any surgery, we'll, we will have risks of infection, risk of bleeding, um, there can be seroma formation, so fluid buildup around the implant, that, that is also uh, something that we can see. Um, other than that, I would say that uh, the other things that may be associated with prepectoral reconstruction are more like uh, consequences rather than complications. For example, I, like I talked a little bit earlier about the implant being more visible, or there may be a little bit of rippling in, in, in patients where the breast skin is very thin after the mastectomy, so things like that. Yeah, I think it's just things that patients need to be aware of mm -hmm. before they make their mm -hmm. choice. And I would say that, um, you know, when we look at studies today on prepectoral reconstruction, there aren't many, but, you know, people are starting to study this type of surgery more and more and comment on capsular contracture. Um, so what capsular contracture is, is a, is a hardening of the uh, tissue around the breast, uh, around the breast implant, and it's, it's a problem that happens both to women who have breast augmentation for cosmetic reasons, or also for women who have implants for breast reconstruction. Um, and although capsular contracture is not dangerous per se, it's just uncomfortable because nobody wants their breast to be hard like, yeah. like a rock. Um, and so I think though for prepectoral reconstruction, I personally feel that although there are studies that seem to show that uh, a cellular dermal matrix, so that donated human skin, may reduce the risk of capsular contracture and, and that it is looking promising, I think that we need to look at this complication over a longer period of time. It's not, it's not something that happens within the first few years. Yes. Exactly. So I, I prefer to not comment on capsular contracture and wait, you know, until I've seen my patients for like 10 years or something like this to really be able to comment on it. Well, thank you very much, Valerie. I think we're gonna wrap up the video now. I hope that you learned something useful. If you like what you've learned, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and join us for the video next week. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Hi, so Valerie. Um, Why did you say hi? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. um, 